All right, so lab 32. Or... I'm really tempted to go here, to be honest, just to kind of get it out of the way. Plus, it's good early uh, combat to help level up. Bandits! Must report to Sir Crowley! Uh, freaky creatures coming in here. I'm gonna drop a slash on these guys. Uh, I want to hit this guy too. Oh, whoa, okay. Yeah, these guys are tough. I think he's gonna be a bit more of a problem. So let's see if we can get rid of him. Nice shot, Jesse. Started streaming and no one was here, so I thought I'd keep you company. Well, thank you very much. I could definitely use the company. Though I don't mind just talking, I at least get to uh, talk about the game, mechanics, things I like about the game, uh, observations here and there. But it's always good to have someone to talk to. I certainly appreciate it. I don't want to avoid using too, many, too much tech with him. Uh, especially if he can drop a critical hit like that. Let's see if Jesse can finish this guy off here. I'm waiting for the ATB. I'm a little parched. Although I don't think a sugary soda should, is going to help my throat at all. With all the talking I'm going to be doing. <laughs> And these guys. There was a bridge here. I saw it. Grab it. Fool. Grab it. There's nothing here. But, but it's true. Grab it. Someone's coming. Let's scram. Grab it. <laughs> Not quite how I imagined them to sound, but that, that's what I came up with on the fly. I'm going to stick with it just for... Uh, Consistency's sake. This is a town on the spooky side. This is an eerie place. I've got a bad feeling about this. <sighs> you always say that. You're always saying, I got a bad feeling about this place. <laughs> Alright. When I get back, I'll tell you folks. It's all over. The fishermen attack if I make even the slightest noise. I'd rather have my gum scraped than have to fight these fiends. Ugh. Must be a dentist. <laughs> Kermit the Frog. I didn't think about that, but uh, I don't know. I think I can't do a very good Kermit, to be honest. Hi ho, Kermit the Frog here. Uh, I kind of like what I did with that one. It's just those guys are meant to be annoying, so I kind of wanted to go with an annoying uh, sort of voice there. There's a cute little kitty here. Let's say have the kitty. Ah! Damn you, kitty! You betrayed us! It's a bad Mr. Kitty! Let's do second one. Yes, let's watch... Let's watch Ted dance on the water like Mr. Jesus Christ himself <laughs> as he attacks these enemies. Just... No. That doesn't make any sense. But hey, it's a fantasy game. It's not supposed to make sense. Uh, let's do a flame toss on this guy. There we go. And you're gonna attack him. Damn, he's just dropping the hurt. And Jesse's gonna need to heal before she drops. Uh, we'll do another flame toss here, and Ted's gonna finish off with an attack. I'll bow, bow before Ted says Christ. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny you say that. It's funny I brought up the 
Jesus Christ bit. Um, I think it was done a while ago, but I actually uh, saw a uh, video by the game theorists. Uh, let me finish that thought in, this, thought in a second. Basically, if you, you could kind of get the feeling here, is that note said, even if I make the slightest sound, they attack me. Well, they basically decided to throw a whole bunch of little stuff here and there that you can get attacked just by interacting with. And you know what? Just for fun, I'm going to interact with this and kick that can into the trash can and then get attacked. Uh, ultimately, it's probably not the best I th thing to do. Because you can kind of will yourself down pretty quick. Oh, oh crap. Wrong. Shoot. Uh, who needs healing right now? I'll just heal Jesse for the moment. Yeah, but, um, uh, the Game Theorist, I, a show I highly recommend on YouTube. It's an awesome, awesome look and insight into games on a much deeper level than I think maybe anyone ever really meant to. But they did one on Chrono Trigger and comparisons to how the game plays out, as well as characters in the game, uh, compared to the Bible. And elements in the Bible as well, and how Chrono sometimes comes across a bit like Jesus Christ. There's references to uh, like the three what the three wise men uh, having the same names as uh, the three gurus in this game. Kind of a fun little uh, observation. And the guy who does it, uh, Matt Pat, is, really does his homework. Puts a lot of uh, work into uh, into the game itself. Ah, oh, oh. you got me, game. Pretty sneaky, sis. Yep. There you go. I really fell for that one, hook, line, and sinker. Stinker. Yeah, if you haven't seen that particular episode, or you haven't seen any of the game theorists yet, I highly recommend it. Some really uh, awesome, awesome theories. Like, uh, uh, speaking of another Square game, the Final Fantasy series uh, brings out the theory of uh, Final Fantasy being anti-religion or something along those lines, based on a variety of uh, stuff in the games. I think some of the better ones are all the Super Mario theories that they come about involving stuff like Peach being the true villain of the game, of the series, <laughs> orchestrating everything behind the scenes. Um, like stuff about Rosalina being uh, the child of uh, Peach and Luigi, not Mario based on genetics and a whole bunch of other stuff. It's kind of... It's really cool. <laughs> yeah, the Link is a Dead one from Majora's Mask is a good one. I think I, think I saw that one. But yeah, check it out if you haven't already. It, it, I highly recommend it. Very, very good. Some good, fun video game entertainment. <laughs> yeah, we're getting some more fights here. Boop, 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 boop. So the main part of this little area here is, as I mentioned before, um, in order to get to the southern, or maybe southern or eastern, yeah, I think it's southern, uh, continent, uh, near Death Peak, you need to go through this area, and I, I'm thinking maybe I missed something. No, I'm, nope, that's it. trying to remember everything that's going on around here. <laughs> yeah, you have to go through this area in order to get access to Death Peak in uh, that area. You don't really need to go here yet, because much of what's going on in that part of the... part of this timeline doesn't really... Uh, there's no... nothing you really need to do. You can just save it for later. But this is kind of fun to do, just get ac get a little... Uh, experience and gain access to uh, some other stuff. 
and just have access to it in general. As you go through, you activate these switches here, as you see, uh, in order so you can just kind of skip a lot of the fights and not have to take the long way around. All right, <laughs> I'm trying to remember the voice here. Press the switch and the bridge opens, Ribbit! So switch on, Gribbit! Uh, uh, ribbit! It's out of reach, Ribbit! And you call yourself a frog, Ribbit! Gribbit! Someone's coming! That's Cram, Gribbit! Am I annoying you yet with those voices? Please say I am. Because <laughs> that's the whole point. <laughs> Ah, oh, jeez. Ooh, Rage Band. Oh, we like this. This is a good one. The Power Glove is nice. Boosts up your attack power. But the Rage Band. 50% counterattack rate. In other words, if whoever wears that item uh, gets hit with an attack, there's a 50% chance they will just immediately counterattack with a basic attack. Solid. So, I mean, anytime you can get an extra attack in in this game is just money. Worth doing. Even if you're losing a little bit of power in the process, over the long haul, it does. it's much better. Yeah, funny enough about those frogs, they mean nothing overall, if I remember correctly. They, they don't do anything. They're just there for shits and giggles. As well as kind of like a little mini tutorial to say, how do you do this? Alright, so we're getting into a boss fight here. The three of them are almost here! <laughs> Coming through the sewer like that, like they own it. They must have a death wish. We shall teach them a lesson. Let's show them, hee <laughs> hee! Just let them come here, they'll be chopped liver! Ha 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 ha! <laughs> ah, I'm out of here. What? <laughs> oh, so stupid. <laughs> but so funny anyway. <laughs> oh, that's so worth it. I love it. Alright, let's drop an aura whirl on, or fire whirl on this guy, just to open up. Shabams! Ah, nice critical hit, I love it. Ah, oh, you douche, what are you doing? That's just wrong, man. Oh, that's not good. Hang on, Tasha. Jesse's coming to save you. So I think all that really is, is it looks like, oh my god, he did massive amounts of damage. Really what it is, is it's one of those kind of attacks in uh, RPGs that are meant to just immediately drop you to one hit point. It doesn't matter where your hit point total is, it's just going to drop you to one hit point, no matter what. And it's basically meant to bring you within one hit of dying. It's scary, but... Uh, if you manage it pretty well, or particularly if you're expecting it, uh, it's not usually a bother. Just gotta be on your toes. Uh, Tasha's gonna need more healing again. Uh, oh. Ted got beaten up a bit. So speaking of the tech system, um, talking about it earlier, right now, for the most part, all the characters, all they really have are two techs. Got Ted's got Cyclone and Slash. Jesse's got Aura and Provoke. Tasha's got Flame Toss and Hypno Wave. Now you can tell there's a lot of space underneath these, and they are going to get more text, but something's got to happen for them to get access to those. And that's going to be happening a little bit later, and I believe we're going to have enough time to get th to that point. And I can show it off to you. Um, but yeah, the text wise, we just have these texts here. Uh, so far, for the most part, all anyone's really going to be able to uh, team up with is uh, Ted here. 
but at some point, as characters gain more techs, they'll start being able to uh, do dual techs with each other. You see, you pick a character, you pick uh, the dual tech, and I'll show you which characters it will work with. Uh, by the way, I want to get rid of that. Hopefully that wasn't up there that whole time. <laughs> Stupid arrow. Anyway. Yeah, I'd like to use it. No, I can't. Basically, it's only anything that's uh, in yellow you can use out of battle. Which is primarily all healing stuff. But at some point, you can see here we're going to be able to get triple techs. Which is the most you can ever really get. But it's primarily all going to involve Ted and then two other characters. And triple techs are pretty much where it's at. You just... You do massive damage, uh, full area attacks, and it's just awesome. It's one of the coolest parts of the game. The dual techs are great, but the triple techs makes it all, all just so worthwhile to wait an entire turn to get everybody up and going. So you can drop that triple tech right on a boss. And he feels so good, too. So good. And I talked about that last time, where attacks just... Part of the game that has combat, it, the attacks have to feel good. Like, you just... You enjoy it when you when your character drops in with a, just a, an attack, like cutting with the sword with Chrono here, uh, a.k.a. Ted. Uh, we're gonna do a Cyclone. Mm, no, I didn't think so. This guy's got more HP than that. Nice crit! When do I get Frog back? <laughs> uh, Frog's gonna be a while. You might not end up uh, seeing him again, or let alone using him, uh, until maybe next session. Depends on how long I go in this session. So far we're already about an hour... like 45 minutes to an hour in. I don't want to go too long with this, because i got to edit these da edit these videos down to about... between about half an hour to an hour each, so that they're not too long. But it's not a whole lot of whole lot of work. The main thing is just waiting for the whole thing to compile. That can take a couple of hours to do. But, yeah, we'll see how we're going, how, how we're feeling overall. And after all that, we get a bolt sword. Very nice. Although I will say this, you're only really getting the bolt sword this early. The very next area we're meant to go to, uh, in terms of actual pro uh, story progression, is going to have one of those available. So, <laughs> Let's see some healing. Uh, yes, we've been here. So, we're gonna climb these stairs up and arrive here on the southern continent. I think there's a map function. Yes. It's not great. Wow, that looks really bad, actually. <laughs> but you can see here we're uh, just south of where we were before. Uh, okay, get out of there. And we're in the Keeper's Dome. Ooh, new music. Nice new music. Holy, what are you? I'm pleased you find think me worthy, oh wise one. I await your final program code. Oh no, don't go getting emotional on me, critter. Back to work now. Yes, sir. Shall I miss you so? No! You must not climb Death Peak. Wouldn't make it very far anyway. It has to be the right time. And they have to show you the way. Say, did you see my masterpiece, the Ocean Palace and the Blackbird? I designed and built them both. <laughs> you know what, I think maybe in future... Uh, I should have thought of that ahead of time. Um, immediately I'm kind of thinking of a, of a Farnsworth voice for that character. <laughs> oh no, okay. I'm going to try something here. Just for fun. Just for fun. Good news, everyone! Oh, shall I have missed you so? 
No, you must not climb Death Peak. Wouldn't make it very far anyway. Has to be the right time, unlike those other guys. Poor sons of... A anyway, and they have to show you the way. Say, did you see my masterpieces? The Ocean Palace and the Blackbird? I designed and built them both. <laughs> that didn't come out very good. It's mostly the same as... I can't do a great farms with, to be honest. However, this one... Oh, I'm pleased you think me worthy, O wise one. I wait your final program call. Now, don't you go getting all emotion me on me, you damn lobster. Back to work now. <laughs> nah. That could have been better. Uh, just immediately just thought of Farnsworth and Zoidberg in that role in those roles. But We're going to be moving on. Oh, look, this bridge is available now. When it wasn't before. Now we head back. Yeah, this is a quick, quick path now, back and forth from this area to Death Beacon. I think for the most part, we might it might not be terribly necessary. Like, it's, re it's really only used once. <laughs> and then it's just, you never end up going there again. Alright, after uh, that fun little frolic. Let's uh, use a shelter here. And we're gonna save. Still trying to get beyond the ruins. And now we're at Lab 32. Midtonic. More exciting music. Alright, here we go. It's that jet bike we were told about. And check out that lightning bolt on the side. That must make it. That It must be fast, because it's got a lightning bolt on it. Now it's combat time, but where's uh, the interface? Hold it right there! Hey, it's... The Man! Like, thanks for the intro, babe. The Man! You little lifes can call me Johnny. Now listen up. Part of an old highway leads through these ruins. Think you could beat me in a bike race? Use that jet bike, and don't chicken out, babe. Do you know how to ride? Why, of course I do. Even though I've never ridden this before, I know how to ride anything. So this race is, uh, honestly pretty simple. Uh, and there's that Mode 7 that the Super Nintendo is so famous for. So... The trick to this, it's... I don't know if you'd call it like a... War of Attrition here. Effectively what happens is you is you and Johnny just keep trading places uh, throughout the course of the battle of the race. Uh, and you basically want to be ahead of Johnny by the time you uh, go past the goal. And one way you can try and do that is bumping him to keep him from getting ahead of you, like I did there. Just basically <laughs> kept him behind me. And once you cross the finish line, you win. You really only have to do this once, although I think there's uh, there might be one or two more times you actually have to do it. It's not really hard, it's just timing. Once you get to that point of the goal, the best thing to do is just hit uh, the B button. That gives you a boost. You have three of those. You never really need to use them at all except at that moment. And you just time it right. You hit the boost and you shoot ahead of uh, Johnny and go right past the goal. It beat me. I can't believe it. Come back anytime. Now let's do that right. You beat me? I don't get it. You can charge me anytime. We'll ride the wind, babe. We'll... Drill through the heavens. Yeah, sure, whatever, buddy. <laughs> Alright. So next up, we got a factory, but we can't access this yet. We gotta do something else. We don't have the key. Into Protodome. Hey, what's this about stealing me? 
Plunks me on my hitbox. I don't like the sound of that. Uh, Cyclone can't get all of them, so we're just gonna attack. Hey, there's the there's the counterattack. See, just like that, done. No longer a threat. Bugger, these guys are annoying. Now, now, Nekos. Without Twitch, we wouldn't have these streamings, now would we? Pardon me for the uh, background noise. Fortunately, I live. Uh... Oh no, I screwed that up. That was done. Cause now I gotta do this the hard way. But yeah, I live uh, within the vicinity of a washing machine. That's a little off its kilter, so it makes a lot of noise. Pain in the butt uh, when you're trying to sleep. Well, hopefully it doesn't make too much noise. It doesn't interfere with the uh, sound from the game. Let me know if it does. I'll see what I can do about that. Intertron. HP and MP restore. But you're still hungry. Bummer. I need my munchies, man. Hello, what is this? What's this? It's in bad shape, but it appears to be a humanoid robot. Incredible! I think I can fix it. What? It might attack us! Just like all the other ones have! What makes you think it wouldn't? I'll make sure it won't. Machines aren't capable of evil. You say that! Humans make them that way. Technically, there might be some truth to that statement. Robots are what they are, but, you know, if robots become sentient and decide to build themselves, then, well, they, I think they would be capable of evil at that point. Because they are thinking like humans. <laughs> Tasha, you pity them, don't you? Let me get to work now, okay? All right. Very nice song. <laughs> right, that does it. I'm going to give him some juice. And now, Robo Steam. Look at him, he's so happy. Good morning. Mor Good morning, mistress. What is your command? I'm not your mistress. I'm Jesse. And this is Ted. And Tasha here fixed you. Understood. Madam Tasha fixed me. Just Tasha will do. Impossible. That would be rude. Look, I hate formal titles. Don't you, Jesse? Hate them. I understand, Tasha. Alright, now what's your name? Name? Ah, my serial number. It is R66-Y. Hmm, I got that wrong. <laughs> R66-Y? Cool! No, that won't do at all. Come on, Ted, let's give him a better name. Okay, so now it's time for Naming Robo. And by a pretty good margin, we have our name. And that does provide a bit of a problem for me, <laughs> as I'm going to be voicing everybody. Uh, as far as I can tell, that hasn't changed yet. So that means I have to try and voice Robo here. And... 
For those following on my DeviantArt account, you know uh, there are pollings. There's polls on uh, what the name of the character is going to be, and the winner for the candidates was HK47. Those of you not familiar with this guy, uh, HK47 is a character from the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic series. And HK47 is a assassin droid. <laughs> uh, he is known for having a very strong desire to kill. HK47. HK47, that's perfect. So, he has a very specific way of talking, too. Uh, all of his dialogue begin with, um... I want to say it's a term, basically describing how uh, his dialogue is going to be. So if he's uh, asking a question, he'll start off with something like, Quandary. Uh, what do you mean by that, per se? It, he has a very uh, specific way of talking. And it's going to be difficult for me to try and do that, but I will try. <laughs> Your new name is HK47, okay? I am HK-47. Data storage complete. Who do I target to kill now, Master? Hey, HK-47, why aren't there any people here? Because I killed them all. Observation. Because I killed them all. <laughs> Question. What? What has happened here? There were many humans and others of my kind in this dome. I must have killed them. I think something awful happened here. Observation. It would appear so. Question. But how is it that you survived? I could have sworn I killed all the humans here. Tasha, we... We came through a time warp from the year 1000. While exploring Arstone, we learned there was a gate here. We found you when we came looking for the gate. But the door in the inner chamber is locked, so we're out of luck. Observation. Power is off. Epiphany. If we go to the factory up north, I can pass through security and activate the dome's generator. You'd do that for us? Exclamation. You, prepared, you repaired me. Now it's my turn to help you. But the generator won't run for long, Master, so someone must stay behind to open the door while the power's on. <laughs> then Jesse or I will stay. Who will stay behind? Hmm. I probably should have... There are moments to this where you do get to choose uh, which character you're going to take, so... Hmm. Who's going to be... Uh... I think logically, usually, I kind of go with Jesse just because Tasha is more familiar with uh, uh, computers and electronics, so she would make sense for her to be on this end to activate the door. So we'll go with Jesse. Okay. Be careful, Ted. Oh, whoops. I screwed that up. <laughs> I think I can change that, though. I think? Nope. Maybe not. Hey, I was getting so bored. May I take Tasha's place? Yeah. I messed up. I meant to say uh, Tasha. To have to stick around and activate the computer. Again, thinking logically, of course. Uh, let's see here. Let's uh, switch up our party. And now we have Robo in our party. Or HK47 in this case. And if you notice, I talked quite a bit about killing humans, which is a thing HK-47 is very, uh, very into. I mentioned he likes to kill, and that's just about anybody and everything. And in uh, the game he comes from, he pretty much only listens to the main character, all, often referring to him as Master. And there's 
oftentimes where HK-47 feels a desire to kill, and he, of course, will only do so unless his master asks, with only a few exceptions. <laughs> so now we enter the factory. And without Robo, you cannot uh, progress forward. As you can see, there's two uh, conveyor belt tracks. Uh, one leading down, one leading up. The one that was leading up had a, a laser that you couldn't pass through. And of course, the uh, conveyor belt going down, heading towards us, uh, is not possible to bypass. Observation. Override security system, zero, zero. Uh-oh. Excellent. Something to kill. May I kill him now, Master? Uh, momentarily. Let me take care of this first. Ah, right away we get a dual tech. Or a beam. Which is pretty much... A uh, double cure. Restore allies hit points. Something. Pretty much the same as uh, Aura Whirl, for the most part. But as you can see... It's not entirely necessary to bring Jesse along, just because there's no we have a dedicated healer uh, through Robo, as he has Cure Beam, Rocket Punch being his other tech, and Laser Spin. Uh, laser Spin being pretty valuable, as it's really, so far, the only tech you can get access to from any character that will actually attack all enemies on the screen. Whereas so far, we've only had techs like Cyclone, uh, Slash... And uh, Flame Toss, I can only attack enemies within a certain area. Hmm. Anyway. Well, I'm sorry about that, Nekos. Sorry, Twitch is giving you so much trouble. Ah, didn't kill him. Interesting. Down you go. And there goes Robo. It's possible, um, it could just be more than Twitch, it could also be, uh, your computer itself, or maybe even your connection. As far as I know, I haven't really had any issues with it. Left, lab area. Right, factory area. Caution, do not turn off the conveyor belt in the factory. The security system will activate and you'll be in danger. Hmm. Well, let's head down to the factory. And you kind of need to head down to the factory first. Uh, there's things you, some things you got to take care of here. Doom, 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 doom. A hidden mid ether. And something, anything? Yep, we're blocked. Some barrels are in the way. How will we ever? How will we ever get over there? I get a new weapon for Jesse, the Robin Bow. And immediately, if you're thinking you're supposed to take Jesse, uh, there's also a new weapon upgrade for Tasha. So I can't really get. Uh, we gotta do something here. There we go. So effectively, you kind of have to do this. It's the only way you're going to be able to uh, progress any further. But basically, if you remember the note saying, uh, don't mess with the conveyor belt. So basically, the system activated and took us off that and put us elsewhere.
Ah, uh, and there it is, laser spin and rocket roll. Uh, first dual tech that will also attack every enemy on screen. Also, I believe voted uh, by the uh, two best friends as the dumbest dual tech in the game. <laughs> and just for funsies, why don't we show it off? Rocket roll. <laughs> so effectively, I think what it's supposed to do is combine the laser spin and then uh, Karno's cyclone attack to dish out attacks to all the enemies on the screen. Hmm. I don't know what to tell you. It could be me, maybe? I don't know. Maybe something going on with my stream that's uh, causing that to happen, because I don't normally have issues with, uh, with uh, my PC watching anything on Twitch. Might be something that I have that you don't in terms of a program or maybe a, an FX a chip or something. I'm not sure. Not doubting you got a, a good piece of hardware for PC, but I know I find it strange because I don't normally have an issue watching stuff on Twitch. Spinning dervish totem pole. <laughs> a little bit. It's kind of a silly dual tech. It's not one of the better ones, to be honest. It's really only good just to hit everybody in the screen. That's the main idea, is you just want to dish out the hurt. And the more enemies you can attack at once, the better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Counter attack going, I love it. Get rid of you, you're kind of annoying. Bam! More great music from this game. So effectively what that did is it took us right over to this area where we wanted to go. And we got some bugs in our way. And to exterminate. <laughs> Uh-oh. Did that kind of screw us up here? I think it did. Just a little bit. Ah, but that's okay. We'll just do Cyclone. Ah, okay. There we go. Be a decent viewer and watch, but this sacrifice of service is really pushing my patience. I'm sorry. I wonder if it's basically forcing you to subscribe. I wonder if you subscribe that the uh, cuts out anything that's affecting your ability to watch the stream properly. Maybe you got something running in the background that might be affecting it, I don't know. It's weird the way some uh, programs work sometimes. Crane control code. Code 00. XA. Code 1. BB. Whoa! Who put the caffeine in their oils? Like, uh, actually, before when I was first streaming, I was streaming uh, Binding of Isaac, but the first stream was a nightmare because there was so much lag in the game, and I was trying to figure out uh, for a while what the problem was, and it turns out it was something very simple. It was, uh, uh-oh. I'm not paying attention, and Chrono's about to die. Or Ted, in this case. But, uh... And let's do a cure as well. Not really necessary, but just to make sure he's, uh, still up and going. Yeah! 
Yeah. Down you go. But um, I guess there was an update uh, for Binding of Isaac that was actually causing it to have slowdown issues. And running OBS along with that was causing a lot of lag. And I couldn't really run anything else. I almost really couldn't even run the game itself, or stream it anyway. Uh, but in the end, I went through uh, some menus in the game after looking up uh, some solutions online, and I just made one little adjustment, and the game runs fine now. Uh, whenever I try to use OBS, it, there's slight. I know there's a slight delay, but it's so minor that it's you kind of notice it, but then you don't. And fortunately, I can stream that game now. Although, I, that might be the extent of what I can stream, because my computer n needs better hardware. It's not... It's basically a f floor model. It's not a s gaming specifically designed PC. It has stuff that helps it get by for just the basic stuff, but if you want to run a streaming program along with it, then you're probably going to have some problems. <laughs> Uh-oh. 